Greetings again, by the grace of God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I come to you today to share this beautiful thing that the Lord has graced me to see about stones. I love how the Lord uses symbolisms in his word to show us, you know, truths. So anyways, this study is called Stoned, and uh, it's about stones destroyed or collected by the stone loved or rejected. And there's a lot of scriptures in the Word concerning stones, and I just kind of compiled a few of them to present a picture to you that is a truth. And it's shown many ways in the Word, not just this way, but I just thought I would share this. So first off, I'd like to take a look at the stone rejected. And there's three scriptures. One is in Matthew 21, 42 through 46. And then one's in Mark and one's in Luke. Each one is their account. So, and like the word says, you know, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. So it doesn't surprise me that the Lord, you know, has a lot of repetition in the word so we can get it through our thick skulls here. <laughs> anyway, so Matthew 21, 42 through 46. Uh, Jesus said to them, Oh, and this is when the, the chief priests and the elders, you know, came to him and they were talking about the owner of the vineyard, how he would send them, you know, servants and they would, you know, stone them, treat them badly. And then eventually he sent his son whom they killed. But anyway, so this is during this discussion and Jesus says to them, did you never read in the scriptures, the stone, which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And when the chief priests and the Pharisees had heard his, his parables, they perceived that he spoke of them. And But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. So when he's talent, where they're talking about the story about the owner of the vineyard and the, the bad way his servants was treated to the point of his son being dead, they knew that he was speaking of them. So let's go on here. And then in Mark 12, the other account, um, and have you not read this scripture, the stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. <clears throat> and they sought to lay hold on him, but feared the people. For they knew he had spoken the parable against them, and they left him and went their way. So again, they knew he was talking about them. And then uh, the last one in Luke 20, 16 through 19, it says he shall come. Oh, this was the, his answer. You know, what would he do <clears throat> to those men who you know, killed the heir. So he shall come and destroy these husbandmen and give the vineyard to others. And when they heard it, they said, God forbid. And he beheld them and he said, what is this then that is written? The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And the chief priests and the scribes, the same hour sought to lay hands on him and they feared the people, for they perceived that he had spoken this parable against them. So the reason why I put this on here, I just wanted to establish that, one, the kingdom of God would be taken from them, given to another nation. Um, this prophecy concerning the stone, you know, because there's two parts here. We got we got the one that says, you know, the, one, the stone the builders rejected. The same has become the head of the corner. We have that, but we also have this other part. You know, whosoever shall fall upon the stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it will fall, it will grind him to powder. So these are two prophecies that the Jewish people were very familiar with because they read the scriptures. So that, and I think that's why part of the reason why they understood he was speaking concerning them. But let's take a look at these prophecies. Um, and the, the one about the stone being rejected, um, this is Psalm 118, 19 through 24. And it says, open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them and I will praise the Lord, this gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter. Now we know this is talking about the Lord because he said, I am the door. I am the way. 
Okay, it says, I will praise thee, for you have heard me, and you are become my salvation. And the Lord Jesus Christ indeed is our salvation. Okay, and then it says, the stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So that's where the original prophecy came from, right there, that he was quoting. But then also, I wanted to bring forth some of these other scriptures concerning, you know, the stone that would be brought forth and rejected. And in Zechariah 3, 8 through 9, it says, Hear now, O Joshua the high priest, you and your fellows that sit before you. For they are men wondered at, for behold, I will bring forth my servant the branch. And we all know this is Jesus. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Now what he's talking about here is when Jesus died on the cross, because in one day what he did, he died, he, he removed the iniquity of the land in one day. Anyways, and then it's really interesting to me that he says the stone he laid before Joshua had seven eyes. Because if you go into the book of Revelation, throughout the book of Revelation, it talks about how the Lord has, you know, he has seven stars in his hand, but he walks, you know, amidst the seven candlesticks. And if you, if you look at all those scriptures in Revelation, I think it's in chapter five, it actually talks about the lamb having seven eyes. So, um... It's pretty cool. That's a whole different study, though. But anyways, <laughs> I just think it's interesting. Um, but I, anyways, about the stones, let's, I'll stick to that. Um, then again, in the book of Isaiah, um, it says, Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself. Let him be your fear. Let him be your dread. And he will be for a sanctuary. But for a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both houses of Israel. For a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken, be snared and be taken. So this was a prophecy, I think it was like probably a thousand years before Jesus even came. But it's amazing to me how, you know, the word, it's like every jot and tittle comes to pass. The Lord does not ever, you know, go contrary to his word. But, you know, like it says in Romans, uh, many of them were broken off that we could be grafted in. And, you know, they stumbled at the word. It's like they couldn't, they just wouldn't receive Jesus. They rejected him. They just wanted to stay with their way. Anyway, um, then in Isaiah 28, 14 through 18, it says, Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, you scornful men that rule this people, which is Jerusalem. Because you have said, we've made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood we have hid ourselves. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believes shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet, and hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and water shall overflow the hiding place, and your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then you shall be trodden down by it. So... In 70 AD, well, let's just go on, but this, this has come to pass. This is a done deal here. The word of the Lord is no joke. Um, oh, and then the second part of the scriptures where it talked about who the, whoever would fall on the stone be broken and whoever would fall on would grind him to powder, that comes from a prophecy in the book of Daniel concerning the very end of days. And in Daniel 2, 34 through 35, it says, oh, well, it was also, I didn't, I just, there's so much scripture. You only only got so much time. You had to keep it short in these for upload reasons. And then also, I don't think people have the greatest attention span sometimes. But, um, so there was a dream Nebuchadnezzar had and he was showed a statue and it had a head of gold 
arms and chest of silver, uh, belly of brass. I think the thighs too were brass and then legs of iron, which went down to the feet. And then the, the toes of it were iron and clay. So he, ha he saw this, he had this dream and then Daniel gave him the interpretation and he told him this great statue, it was like all the kingdoms all the way to the end of time. And then, um, here's what happens at the end. So it says, you saw till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and he brake them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold, broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away, and no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. So you see, the Lord has this stone parable, this stone mystery, just like woven through his word. But we know today the stone which was cut out without hands, you know, that is God's son. He sent his son. No man made him. God sent him. Um, and that is Jesus. And we know that he, when he comes in the last days, you know, when it says he became a great mountain and filled the whole earth, his kingdom is going to rule in this earth. And then in verse 44 through 45, he goes on to say, and in the days of these kings, so we know the 10 toes, you know, were 10 kings, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. For as much as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God has made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof, sure. So just like when Jesus came the first time, he said the stone the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. Um, That's came to pass, and this will come to pass too. It will come to pass too. The Lord is not done with his awesome, precious stone. <laughs> So, anywho, okay, so all these prophecies, okay, let's look at the stones that were destroyed. Um, and then again, we're going to see three accounts. So, Matthew 24, 1 through 2, uh, Jesus went out, he departed from the temple, his disciples came to him, for to show him the buildings of the temple, Jesus said to them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And then again in Mark 13, 1 through 2, he said, And as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answering unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And then here's an interesting piece, because we do have the same exact account here in Luke 21. Um you know, as some of the people spoke of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts. He said, as for these things which you behold, the days will come in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. But um, if you go back, like he was speaking of this in Luke 19 before, you know, he even got to that part in Luke 21. And it, and it gives us a little closer look about these stones. It says, And when he was come near, he beheld the city, and he wept over it, saying, and this was the city of Jerusalem, If you had known, even you, at least in this your day, the things which belong to your peace, but now are they hid from your eyes. For the day shall come upon you, that your enemies shall cast a trench about you, compass you round, and keep you in on every side, and lay you even with the ground, and your children within you. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because you knew not the time of your visitation. And he went into the temple, and he began to cast out them that sold therein, and them that bought, saying unto them, It is written, My house is the house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. So it's very interesting to me that here he's telling them that they will be laid even with the ground and their children, you know, within the city too. So, you know, the stones, it, it's just so sad to me how, you know, people rejected him. But it was, it was written, God knew, it, it all came to pass. But in 70 AD, 
um, this prophecy was fulfilled. You know, the temple was destroyed. Jerusalem was just overtaken by the Romans. There was not one stone left upon another. Um, a lot of a lot of people lost their lives there, but the Lord told them it was coming, and sure enough, it came. So we have, you know, the stone rejected, become the head of the corner. We have these stones destroyed, and now let's look at the stones collected. Okay, in Acts four ten through twelve. Paul says, well, actually, nobody knows who wrote Acts for sure, but I just, I don't know. I, I, I always thought it was Paul, but yeah, I'm, that doesn't mean it's absolutely accurate. So I shouldn't say Paul said, but it is written, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So this shows us here that Christ was the fulfillment of that scripture. He was the stone rejected. And then if we go on to Ephesians 2, 18 through 22, it says, for through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. And when it says we both, it means Jew and Gentile. Um, now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And you are built upon, remember those seven eyes upon one rock? Yep. The foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And you know, and what are we all built upon? We're built upon the word of God, the apostles, the word of the apostles and prophets, the word of God and Christ was the cornerstone laid for the beginning of the new covenant temple. Okay. And then it says in whom all the building fitly framed together grows unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are builded together for a habitation of God through the spirit. Like the word said, um, God does not dwell in temples made with hands. He dwells in his people. And that is the kingdom. When it said he took the kingdom from them, gave it to another nation. That is the nation that it has the kingdom of God right now in them. And that is, you know, Bible-believing, spirit-filled, Jesus-loving Christians. That's the temple of God where he abides. Okay, and then I'm ending with the scripture. Um... It's 1 Peter 2, 1 through 10. It says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if so be that you've tasted the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone disallowed or refused, rejected indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, you also, as lively stones or living stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore, also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect and precious, chosen and precious, and he that believes on him shall not be confounded. Unto you... Therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who's called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have, have obtained mercy. And if you think about it, this is the most beautiful thing to me. We are all mercy stones. We're all just a bunch of stones that God had mercy on and is building his temple with. His temple where he abides. But on that note, the serious things of God, you know, we don't want to be a destroyed stone. We want to be a collected stone. So we got to make sure we're not rejecting Jesus or disallowing him, but that we are loving him and cherishing him for the 
awesome Savior he is because the word of the Lord will come to pass every jot and tittle. But anyways, I just wanted to share this. I just thought it was really neat, you know, that we have a living stone that just collects us. He collects he collects mercy stones to build his temple. It's just awesome. I just love the Lord and I just love his word. Well, I just hope some in some way this blessed you. Um, and God's will be done in your life. Amen.